I saw your tips and techniques presentation where you talked about select for update wait. But when I specify a wait timeout, it still waits forever. Is this a bug? And the answer is no. Let's talk about what select for update wait is, and then we'll see whether it has some things that you need to be aware of. I'm going to create a table called T. It's got one value, just one row only. That's all it needs for the sake of this demo. Let's update that row and leave that transaction uncommitted. So we've locked that row. And obviously if we're doing select for update, you can see why I've locked this row because I want to see what happens. Let's bring up another session now. And that's select for update number two. Different colors just so we can actually see what's going on. Obviously if I did select for update, then that session would hang and there'd be nothing I could do about it. So I'm just gonna assume you know what would happen if I did select for update, it would just sit there forever. The alternative in most releases of Oracle is people do select for update, no wait, which means I'll try to get a lock on that row. And of course, immediately I can't, I get an aura. So I get aura 54, I couldn't get the lock. That makes sense. Both of those things, waiting forever or waiting for zero time, you know, they're use, usable, but the, the sweet spot is probably in the middle somewhere. And that's what select for update was that came in, I think in Oracle nine. So I can choose a timeout now. I'm going to wait for up to five seconds because this, the session over here in black has not yet committed. I waited five seconds and then I said, yep, I blew up. That is how select for update works. Now the original question that was is they're using select for update with a wait timeout and it's not coming back. Why is that? Let's roll back that transaction and let's do this. Lock table T in exclusive mode. So I've locked the table now. I can do select for T for update, no wait, just like I was before, and I'll get the exact same normal aura 54. Let's now try select for update, wait for five. You know, one, two, three, four, five, and nothing happens. When you're trying to lock rows and other sessions have locked rows, select for update with a wait timeout works as you would expect. When the table has been locked entirely using the lock table command, select for update with a wait timeout will not time out. It will wait forever just like normal. That will simply never ever come back. So there is that subtle difference between trying to lock locked rows and trying to lock a locked table. Now, before you race off to your My Oracle support, getting ready to log a bug, flip forward to the documentation and it's literally banged in there, right there in the docs. If you specify wait or skip locked and the table is locked in exclusive mode, the database will not return the results of the statement until the lock is released, regardless of the wait time specified. So this is actually how it's always been from day one. Um, I went back and looked at, at all the version documentation I have, and that note has always been in there. It's actually always been the case, just that people have rarely done select for update with a wait timeout on against a table that was locked at table level as opposed to just the rows. So something to be aware of, select for update wait is not guaranteed to time out depending on the kind of source lock that you are competing for. Something to be aware of. Having said that, I still stress you really want to be using the wait command. In, whenever you're trying to lock rows, I would stress you should always add that wait timeout or at least no wait. Because without it, you literally wait forever and forever's a long time. And the reason I hate locks that go on for an extended period of time, I'd, I'd much rather fail, is you have this cascading thing. And this is a slide I stole from one of my other talks. Session 39 there has a lock, but they're inactive. Someone's opened the transaction and wandered off to lunch. The ones in blue there are the ones that are now trying to lock some sort of rows that 39 has. And session 46, 56, and 58, they're all stuck now on session 39. But the problem is, once you have one session and some blocks, there's no guarantee that session 46, 56, or 58 hadn't already taken their own locks on different resources. So now, 62 and 63 and 67 and 71, they get blocked on 46. And because they've got blocks, 76 and 70 get blocked on 62. It's very easy to cripple an entire database 
if you're prepared to have sessions wait forever for locks. All you'd need is session 46 to say, I'm gonna try for a lock for 10 seconds and then blow up. And all these other cascading locks would never occur. So it's important, even though there is that limitation to a wait timeout, I stress you should be using wait whenever you're doing locks that you expect to possibly have to wait for. <laughs>